Well, hello everybody and welcome to the first video in our official Minecraft plugin development series. In today's video, I'll just briefly explain all the terms that the other YouTube tutorials really sucked to explain and the reason is people are so confused you need to know what bucket, crab bucket, spigot paper, NMS is before moving forward because there's different approaches to them and there's completely different ways of making plugins for them. So let's crack right into it. I'm going to be explaining you the difference between the client and the server and also the plugins and mods. These are not the same. I'm also going to be explaining all these terms that I mentioned as well as something called the heartbeat and uh, TPS and how plugins in inject their logic into the server server and how many milliseconds your code actually has before the server stash starts to lag very important and then java so how good you need to be in java to code micro plugins so without any further ado are you ready i bet you can i bet you are let's crack into it you got something called the client which is the game which is, which is something you see on the screen you can see the map right here in the left part of the screen and this is where the graphics is it listens to the keyboard etc etc that's one. And then you have the server. So you got a client side, you got a server side. A server you can't really see. You, all you can see, because it's running in the background, um, you can see the console, right? Which is like the log messages from different plugins and different places in the server. And that enables clients to connect to itself and play together. And it also runs logic such as mob movement. And likewise, we have different modding structures. So Minecraft plugins typically, typically of course there's exceptions, but typically these are only for the server, whereas mods, these are only for the clients. Now what we see as of recently, there's also mods that can work for both server and the client. The biggest downside, every player needs to download the same mod before joining the server. So this is a bit frustrating. That's why I'm not going to be covering my Minecraft mods because with great plugin knowledge, you'll, you'll be able to sort of get into modding very quickly. And with the arrival of resource packs in Minecraft 1.14, I think, you can pretty much do whatever you want with just Minecraft plugins. And these are really nice, and no players need to have them. So all you have to do, you, you drop and drag and drop it, it on a server, boot it to server, players can join in, they, can, they don't have to do anything, and they can enjoy the benefits of it. Now, I already explained this resource pack so let me bring you to the next slide what kind of microservers uh, we have now i'm not going to cover sponge and these you know not very popular niche forks because most micro plugins that don't they don't support them so i'll be covering the sort of official line if you will and this is where it starts with the official micro server it's also called the vanilla it does not support plugins and it's been made by the company that made minecraft called mojang now obviously people were unhappy with it so there was a group of people coming in together created something called a bucket team and they've created an extension on it they built on top of that server to add support for plugins then I think 2014, 13, there was another group group of people coming in. They formed something called Spigot. They took the bucket code and they improved it. And so did uh, Paper. So it's essentially just the line. And <clears throat> you have the old code, the vanilla code. On top of it, there's bucket. On top of it, there's Spigot. And on the very top, there's Paper. So I already explained this. Does not support plugins. People formed a bucket. Spigot extended bucket. And so did Paper. Now, guys, there is going to be an article below this video. If, if I'm going a little bit too fast, you can just click the link at the bottom in the link of, in the description. The link is in the description. And uh, you can have access to basically the full uh, format of this video. So a fork of forks. Yeah, this is how it actually works. And at the end, there's any shady fork that takes the code of Spigot or Paper and tries to patch it or add custom features on it. And eventually, or unfortunately, most people have no idea what they're doing. So you end up with some very shady looking and half broken code. I don't recommend it. Just stick with paper for best experience. Now, what is NMS? So basically, as I explained, Bucket and, 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 and Spigot and Paper, they built on the original foundation called microserver. The original microserver is located in a package. It basically, it's just a folder structure. So in that folder structure called NED, dot minecraft dot server which abbreviates for nms right so this is the original minecraft uh micro stuff now bucket what it has to do it sort of split itself into two two sides the first one is called the api it's for you as the developer to connect connect to and then there is another side which implements the api which is called the craft bucket and this is where it links between you and the nms the problem with this bucket has to carbon copy every feature that is inside the nms such as you have the sent message example right here 
and the problem is they don't cover everything. So people like to skip bucket and they go right in the NMS to code using what they have to offer because they typically have to offer, well, everything. The problem with NMS, it's a bit mystical. It changes, it changes a lot, so the plugins tend to break. That's why the bucket was created, right, to aid you um, easily with the development of your server. And NMS not only breaks, but also NMS is obfuscated, so you never know what it really does because I understand now there's Mojang mappings, but for many years we did not have any uh, deobfuscation mapping. So if you have a, if you have had a method called send player in bucket, it was just called X or it was called A or B or C. It was basically renamed to garbage because Mojang originally intended to prevent um, people from stealing their intellectual property. So that's there. Now how plugins work? I don't have to spend too much time on this, but basically. I wanted to explain why it is important to make high quality plugins because there are so many YouTube tutorials that are garbage and they are not going to teach you the right thing. If you've run a server before, you know what TPS is. It means ticks per second. Now the plugins, the way that they interact with the server, they sort of plug in to something called a server's heartbeat. So every second the server goes like this inside internally in, in the heart of hearts of the server there's a loop and that loop goes from the very moment you hit the launch button to the very moment you hit the stop server button or someone you know pulls out the plug from the socket and uh, because you spend too much time running the server um, and then it, the way it works is the server listens for incoming something called packets which are just data messages so say you hit a zombie right you punch a zombie and then the, the, it goes down it processes that event so this is called the entity damage event it get, then goes into every plugin that is installed it looks for the code if, if the plugin does something when the zombie is hit it asks the plugin to do it and then it continues up there to if the event is not cancelled then the server actually processes the logic such as reduces your health it makes the zombie punch you again for example and it goes round and round and round like crazy now uh, this is to sync the game. Okay, if if the server would not spin, the monsters would not move. You would not see other other players move. There would be nothing. Okay, it's like time. We have time in the physical world, time and space. Minecraft has the ticking. If there's no time, nothing's moving. You don't have a reality. You would not be when watching this video. And this process happens uh, 20 times per second. Right, one second has a thousand milliseconds, guys. Divided by twenty it means you only got zero point zero five seconds to do your thing, and that's why I'm showing you this before you start making plugins. Because if you just follow some quick video and you're really happy because you understand it, but you, not really, you may actually crash your server. You may really lag it, corrupt your data, and you're just gonna waste months of your time. And I see it every single time. Many YouTube tutorials, they get up outdated so easily, they're so disorganized, they don't provide support, and they teach very low coding standards. So we decided to fix it. To make your server truly unique, you need to learn from the best and ignore the noise. In the last five years, I've been working on something called Project Orion, which is a complete course on how to make micro plugins fast without developers or spending months on learning. Code comes with a full Java course. If you've never coded anything before, we include a full Java course with Orion, there is Spigot, there is paper training, a full training, I'm not saying some YouTube disorganized chaos, it's actually step-by-step -step custom built community and portal with over 1,800 1, private members group and there's me personally to answer any questions and even you can unmute yourself on something called live coaching calls but you don't have to if you don't want to and you can share your screen and you can speak with me and I can help you guys out. And if you try the program for 30 days and you don't like it, we have a full 30-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, we also began, I think, two years ago working with JetBrains. So now if you come in, we actually give you all the licenses that you need for all the techie programs. So you don't have to purchase anything. We're just going to give you everything that you need. And there's over 1,000 reviews which are available at the website mineacademy.org slash project orient. So if you want to learn more about this, go to mineacademy.org slash project dash orient and I'll be very happy to walk you guys through it on that page. Now, I don't want to make this video too long. I hope that you learned something. If you want to dive very, very deep into this, there is a full training course called Project Orient that I just explained. Now, the purpose for this tutorial is to give you guys like a 
pretty high standard. I'm not going to be going as deep because I don't have that much time, but it's basically like a, a, a sort of like crash course into Minecraft plugins. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very first Minecraft plugin. We're going to be compiling it. It's going to be a bunch of fun and I'll see you there. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you there.